Hello, welcome to this short video on eight strategies for creating a media campaign. My name is Ashley Nelson. I'm the Communications Director at the International Coalition of Sites of Conscience. The first step in creating any sort of campaign, whether you're advocating for a cause or your own election, it is always important to set clear goals for yourself and your audience. The larger goal, of course, is to be elected. But try to focus on two or three other goals you want to achieve. Perhaps, for instance, it's women's health or an anti-domestic violence campaign. When communicating these goals, you want to be as specific as possible. Avoid saying simply, I want to improve women's health to your audience. Say instead, women face unique health needs from stress to domestic violence that are not being adequately addressed. I will change that. Define the issue for yourself so you can be more effective when you convey it to others. What is the problem and what is the solution? Be as clear and concise as possible. Inject action words. Women need safe spaces to discuss their specific health needs. Finally, objectives or goals were fine. How will I accomplish this goal? Make sure your goals are specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based. If improving women's health is one of your goals, a good objective might be I will drop off 100 flyers at healthcare centers that will reach 100 women in one week. The second step in any media campaign is to really think about your messaging. And to do that, it's important to research and compare your campaign ideas with others that have come before it. Particularly women candidates, you may want to ask what has worked for them in the past? What hasn't? Are there certain types of topics that are well received and others that are not? Further, what are the latest developments on these issues and the coverage of them? What backlash might I anticipate? Look into the subject's background, past news and media coverage, previous efforts and campaigns, and overall content. Stay abreast of current developments. The next step is knowing your audience and defining it. Uh, an essential component of, of campaigning is activating, strengthening, and growing the community of supporters who are willing to actively support you. To get elected, you'll need to increase your numbers of active supporters. This means your campaign must reach beyond the groups of people who already support your cause. So in any campaign, it is really important to state specific goals in terms of a larger audience. A campaign does not have to appeal to everyone, and yet it can still be effective. Generally, though, it can be helpful to focus on two target audiences. One are decision makers. These are the people that really can make change in your community. Maybe they're other politicians, or health ministers, or funding agencies. In many cases, this will be your primary audience. But influencers are also another group that can be really crucial to carry your message forward to new spheres. So these can include journalists, faith-based groups, victims' organizations, even academics or students or entertainment personalities, if you happen to know any. Um, in many cases, it is not necessary to mess, you know, win all of your opponent's supporters, but move those who are undecided or uncertain a step in your direction. Once you have decided in the groups most likely to do this, perhaps they're mothers or perhaps they're university students, then you can make better decisions on how to shape your campaign to reach those specific audiences. And after you have identified specific groups in your target audience, 
and especially if they include broader groups such as survivors, students, or youth. It can be helpful to consider how demographics may shape your campaign audiences and broader approaches to them. So some questions you may want to think about are what media do these groups have access to? Which do they like? Which do they use? Are they literate? How does this group generally perceive your issues? Are they inclined to be sympathetic? Will they need coaxing? How proactive are they? What would it take to get them to take action? Demographics. How do race, gender, ethnicity, age, education, and religion factor into this context? Also, it is never too early to think about partnerships and allies and campaigns, as they can become key stakeholders to advance your movement. Early in the design process, do not be afraid to reach out to like-minded individuals who can partner on any initiative. This not only can increase your potential outreach, but can also build a sense of belonging in groups. The fourth step in a campaign would be to craft a message. Um, more than a stated goal, your message really needs to convince people. It needs to pull them in and make them act. There may be several messages, but they should all lead to the same goal, which in this case is getting you elected. An effective message should always be accurate, of course, and generally they should be simple and explain your cause clearly you should emphasize the critical importance of your cause, the urgent necessity of it. You should tell people something new, something they maybe have not thought about before. Be engaging, interesting, open, and articulate the need to take action, and most importantly, provide solutions. The message needs to be effective, in other words. It needs to propel people to act to vote. Reclaim your voice in the voting booth and at home. Vote like your life depends on it, because it does. To give a couple examples. Number five is know your resources and budget. There are many ways to conduct a campaign within a range of budgets. So be real realistic and creative about your own. What funding do you have? Are there any limitations for how and when that funding can be used? What will you need to move your campaign forward? What are the required expenses? Think also in terms of resources. Will you need to search for volunteers? Will you need to hire someone with a specific skill set? Think about the resources that you may have access to already. Is there someone you know who is a filmmaker? perhaps, that can help you out with a video? Do you need funding to produce, stream a radio program, or printing for posters? Or might a cheaper digital advocacy campaign be better? Investigate your resources and reach out for partnerships when necessary. There may be unlikely allies who are willing to donate supplies, talents, and other resources, even if they are unable to commit to showing up in person or planning an action directly. We touched on number six a little bit, but I'll reiterate it, and that's to choose your media wisely. So as you convey your campaign message to media, it's going to be essential to, to use media to achieve your campaign's larger goals and ultimately election or re-election. Be intentional and strategic to advance your objectives. What media coverage will help achieve your goal most effectively? The diversity of potential media content can push candidates to think through how formats and media distribution mechanisms can help engage diverse audiences, depending on your campaign's goals. Some questions to consider are, what media formats do your participant communities have access to? What media formats and platforms do your target audiences use the most? What media format can best convey your message and your strengths? 
what media format will most likely encourage people to act and engage with the initiative? Which media format is most popular in your geographic region? Finally, in other videos, you will be provided tips on interacting and telling your story to journalists. So it can be very important to getting your stories and goals to the public. Number seven is to really know that timing is crucial in any campaign. Taking advantage of specific events to highlight your goals, for example, is always a good idea. It's important to build stages of a campaign so that you can escalate over time. Perhaps you have a debut media where you release a video on YouTube and then follow up with shorter videos. It helps to be as specific as possible when you're planning. So make an internal timeline to plan, produce, and publish media in alignment with the campaign's goals. When will your media be released? Which messages and media are to be sent out and when? For example, will you distribute 100 flyers? Will you spend a certain number of days at a community center to introduce yourself and let journalists know about it? Or aim to post a message on social media once a day for the last 100 days of your campaign? Whatever it is, allow for progressive buildup through different stages of the whole campaign. If you're planning several stages of a campaign, create distinct media plans for each stage and diverse distribution mechanisms. Communicate your message and coalition before to your coalition before relaying as a public message. Let your allies know when you are planning the next stage of your campaign so that they can be prepared to help you and to amplify your message. Finally, make your, re your timeline realistic and achievable. And that always involves building in a little more time than you think necessary. Finally, the eighth and final step of a digital or, or you know, print, any sort of advocacy media campaign is really being able to measure your impact. You know, the fact that people learn about you or see about you in a campaign does not necessarily mean they're going to be moved to vote. But don't despair, but do plan for this possibility by creating indicators that not only track, say, views or audience size, but also track action. If you're doing a social media campaign and you're receiving only a few followers, stop and take a moment to reevaluate. Do you need new content? Do you need to do more media outreach? Never be afraid of trying something new and always be optimistic. So I hope this helps you. Please be feel free to reach out to me at the address on the screen. I am always happy to give tips um, and, and any advice I can. Um, thank you so much. Bye-bye.